OK, so let's do a quick review of what we've learned, and then we'll move forward from, from there. Uh, so guys, so as you recall, yeah. Uh, can you go to left? Go to what? Why? Yeah, there are more files. Don't worry, we'll get there later. Why do you need that? Let's look at code for now. You have all the things you need here. Yeah, uh, there, there might be some differences, which I'll check in later. I just need the comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Full comment yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so if you recall with Java, the very first thing you do is you have to uh, make a class. Um, so you specify the class, so you say class, and then the class name. So we have a function called main, which takes args, which is a list of strings, it returns nothing, and what does it actually do? Yeah. So it does system dot out. System is an object. Dot out object. Dot print ln. What is print ln? A function. Good. Which takes as an argument a string. Good. And it prints that to our, our console. Good. So that's the first one. We're going to go through these quickly. So as you recall, in, um, in JavaScript, we would create variables just by doing const name of the variable or let name of the variable. In Java, you have to say the kind of value that that variable will contain. Remind me, why? Why do we need to declare the type for the variable? To optimize the program memory usage. Good. Mm -hmm. The memory has to be Exactly. So if you recall, what is a variable? Well, a variable is just a place where you can put data, right? It's a, yeah. So we need to know how much space to allocate in our memory, right? So if it's a number, okay, what kind of number? Is it going to be a very short number where we only need to allocate a few bits? Or is it going to be a really long number and we need to allocate lots of bits? Right? So you as a programmer have to know ahead of time when you're writing your code the kind of data you expect and then create the appropriate variables for that data. Okay? Uh, and if you recall, we had a list of types. So we went through a list of, of types for the numbers. So we had a byte, which is just used to store you know, one thing, one or a zero. So it's a one bit thing. Um, sorry, a, sorry, it's an eight. Crap, sorry, 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 sorry. A how many bits is a byte? Eight. That's right, so sorry. So a byte actually stores an eight bit number, okay? Uh, short stores two bytes, so that's how many bits? 16. 16 bits, good. You don't have to memorize these. The ones that you will typically use, just remember this. This is very easy. If you're gonna store a really big number, use a, where's it, long, this one, long. If you're going to store a basic integer, use an int. You will rarely use byte and short. I've never really seen these in applications. That's very rare. Uh, the other thing is float and double. And that's if you want to do like dot something, right? Like 25.3. Um, and as you can see, double can store more of that than a float. So very often you will use a double. By the way, in JavaScript, when you specify a number, Underneath, it's declaring it as a double. Just interesting fact. Um, obviously, you can also store booleans. How many bits do you need to store a boolean? One. One. One means true, zero means false. Easy. Good. Okay. That's wrong. That should be a bit. That's my mistake. Sorry, I'll get rid of that. No, it's, it, sh it should just be one bit, right? Zero or one. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, whatever, we know all the stuff. Let's keep going. Conditionals, if statements. So if statements in Java work pretty much exactly the same way as in JavaScript, the one thing that is slightly different is that in JavaScript we had the triple equals, equal, 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 or the not equal, equal, if you remember this. In Java you don't do that, you just use a basic equal, equal, or a not equal. The rest of it is the same. Same Boolean operators, and, or, and not. All of that remains the same. Questions about conditionals? Good. So you know this. Easy. Let's keep going. Creating arrays. Again, remember, with Java, anytime you allocate memory, 
That is to say, you allocate space where you want to put stuff into it. You have to say how much. And the type will tell Java how much. So if you want to, for example, create an array of numbers or integers, you say that. You say, I want to create an array of ints. This is the name of the variable. And now I will do a new and create an array of specifically five things. So in memory, it will allocate one, two, three, four, five places to store integers. And you have your array. Got it? If you wanted to make your array bigger, what do you have to do? You have to make another array. Yeah, you can't just make this array bigger. Okay? We can enlarge the array, but can we just like second or third? Yeah, so, so an array has values, but the values may be missing. And in Java, what do we... What is the value of a missing value? No. 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 In JavaScript, it's undefined. In Java, it's no. null. Okay, that's another minor difference. So remember that. So in Java, if you make a variable, you put nothing into it, null. Not undefined. Okay, in JavaScript, the same thing would be undefined. That's a difference. Is the difference clear? Yes? Good. Okay. Uh, other than that, a lot of other similarities. If you want the length of the array, you just do array.length. The name of the variable, dot length, this will give you the length of the array. Good. Okay, easy. <coughs> Loops. Almost exactly the same as what you've seen in JavaScript, except for this part right here. So instead of doing let i equals 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus, we're doing int i equals 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus. Because remember, whenever we create a variable, we have to say the kind of variable we're making. So in this case, i is an integer. Clear? That's the beginning. That's the end. Everything inside of here will execute for every cycle. Yes, sir? But in this case, we can use byte or short, right? <laughs> uh, it depends on how, how, yeah. But that depends on how much you want to do that or what your limit is. You're right, because the limit is 5, and 5 is less than uh, short. You're absolutely right. This could have been done with a short, yes. Nailed it. Uh, we also have a while loop. Again, same exact idea as what you've seen in JavaScript, and do while. Just so I'm clear you know this, does anyone remember what do while is? Yes. What is do while? What is do while? Right. What were you going to say? Do while the condition is true. Yeah, but while is. It does it once, at least once. Exactly. It does it at least once. So it does. Then it checks. Then it checks, and if it's true, then it does it again. Got it? Whereas the while, it will only do this if this is true. So in this, in a while, it checks the condition, then it runs. In do while, it does it, then checks the condition. If it's true, it does it again. Got it? Good. And finally, we, st we looked at the, f the equivalent of a for each. This syntax here is basically a for each for an array. Okay? So if you recall, in JavaScript, for any array, you could do dot for each, give it a function, and what would that do? Iterate through the array and do the function for each other. Beautiful. Exactly. For every value inside of your list, inside of your array, it will call your function, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Right? You can print it, you can do whatever you like. This is kind of the equivalent of that in Java. You're saying, with, this is your array, R, which has American University of Armenia. It has four pieces of text inside, therefore it's, what is the length of that array? Four. It's one, two, three, four. What is the last index of that array? Three. So zero, one, two, three. A lot of people seem to confuse the length of an array and the last index of the array. Don't. Length is how many are there. It's the count. It's the size how many items are in the array. The last index is the index, which begins with zero. OK? All right. So here what we're saying is we want to loop over this array. And for every value in that array, 
we want to store that into this variable. So on the first cycle, L will contain American, and we print that. On the next cycle, L will contain university. Next cycle, L will contain of. Next cycle, L will contain Armenia. So the output of this is American University of Armenia. Does that make sense? Can we print it on the same line? Yeah. So how how would you what would you do to change it so it prints on the same line? Huh? Print. Don't do print ln. Print ln means print line. Print means print 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 print. Then print ln. Nice. Without spaces, yeah? Yes, exactly. So, exactly. So, what you can do is L plus like a space in quotes, right? That will give you American University. Cool, good, very good. Uh, other questions regarding loops? Good, easy. It's very easy. See, once you know JavaScript, Java is actually much easier to learn. By the way, the other way around is not. If you didn't know programming and I started showing you all the stuff, integers, booleans, and loops that have you have to declare the very, it would be way more confusing. I don't, I don't know if you agree, but trust me, it would be. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about functions. So as you recall, I said that main is a function, right? Why don't we create a few more functions? So for now, don't worry about the first two things I wrote. Don't worry that I wrote public and static. I promise you I will tell you what that is later. Just bear with me. I know, I know, I know. Oh, it's killing me too, the suspense. Whenever you make a, a function, what do you need? What information do I need to make a function? OK, I need a name of the function. So let me call it, let's write the factorial function. So I need a name. Good. What else do I need? Arguments. Arguments. So I need like n, remember? But in Java, if you recall, I have to say the kind of argument that I'm taking. Let's, let's keep it simple. Let's make it an integer. And what it returns. Very good. Exactly. I have to know what it returns. So if I'm doing a factorial of an integer, the output is probably another integer. Right? OK, so I put that to its left. Then what? Yeah, I need to say the start of the function and the end of the function. right? And the way I do that, if you recall, exactly like in JavaScript, is with the curly braces. Very good. So now notice how it's red. By the way, one of the benefits of using Eclipse is that it will do this kind of stuff for you. It will highlight things red when you do something wrong. So it helps you along. Look at the error. When I mouse over it, it tells me exactly what I did wrong. The method must return a value of type int. Am I returning an int here? No. No. So if I did, though, the error would go away. Nice, right? OK. So now let me actually implement the factorial function. What are some ways I could implement the factorial function? I could use a for loop. What else could I do? Recursion. Which one do I like? Recursion. Thank you. OK, so let's do a recursion. By the way, the other thing that I like is I like it when numbers, when variables don't change. Right? You remember this? I kept saying, try to do everything you can to have variables that don't change. For that, if you recall, we were using const. In, J in Java, we have a thing called final. Final means that n cannot change. It's the final value. Final. Good? It's the same thing as const. So what this means is that I have n, which is a number, it's an integer, and it's final, which means it cannot change. Yes? Good? OK. So now let's do our recursion. Tell me, what do I do? <laughs> okay, if I, okay, here's a simple one. If n is 0, return 1. Good, that's, that's our termination case, for example. And then? But we can write if n is 0 or n is 1, return 5. Let's keep it simple. Yes, you're right. Yes, absolutely. 
Okay, now what? Ta-da! Very nice. Very nice. So now I want to print the result of calling factorial with a 5. What do I do? System dot out dot print print line. By the way, you notice this autocomplete? You get that with Eclipse too. Very comfortable. Okay, no, it's not, but whatever. Uh, so now we call factorial with a five. Save that. Run. Uh, okay. Okay. And we get in our console the, the result. Clear? You notice how most of what, you know most of this. You know how to write functions, you know recursion, you know for loops, you know how to make functions, right? You know all these things. All you have to do is understand some of the syntax and you got it. Pretty nice. Up until now. So if it was that simple, if the two languages were basically the same thing and all you had to do was change a bit of syntax, there would be no reason to have two languages. You agree? Okay, so obviously there's more to this, right? Obviously there's more to Java than what meets the eye, than what we've seen up until this point. And there are, and there's actually a lot. And so now we'll dig into some of the things that make Java very different from JavaScript. So if you recall, whenever we, yes, go. Is 4 faster than using recursion? Is 4 faster than recursion? Uh, it depends, is the answer. If the language is optimized for recursion, they can actually go at the same speed, mm. if it's optimized. And you have to write it in a way that it fits that optimization. There's a notion of tail recursion, and then there's tail call optimization. We can talk about that separately. <laughs> this is much more advanced. But long story short, in most languages you use, like Java and even JavaScript, right now it's not optimized for recursion. But actually the next version of JavaScript is supposed to have tail call optimization. So then, yes, then they will be very fast. Okay, okay now coming back to the rest of you. <laughs> um, so if you remember, I said that every time you write a program or you build a solution, you have to understand your problem, right? That means we have to represent data, right? You have to represent information. And we understand that at a low level, information is represented using binary, ones and zeros. We talked about this on like the very first day. Well, at a higher level though, think about how you as humans represent information. You don't represent ones and zeros, you think of companies. And companies have names, and companies have employees, and employees have names, employees have salaries, employees have, I don't know, age and weight and height and all of these other things, right? This is how you think about the world, yes? So if you think about it, every one of these things that I mentioned, people, companies, etc., are basically these containers that you have in your mind that have attributes, like the name of that object, like the height of that object. And there are references in between them. That is to say, a company might have a reference to all of the people that work there. Think of a reference as just a relationship. Okay, there is something connecting a company to its employees. Right? Okay. So we have this notion of objects. Now we've seen objects in JavaScript. How do we declare objects in JavaScript? How do we declare objects in JavaScript? Yeah, two curly braces. Very easy, right? So you make an object by just making two curly braces and then you can stick any kind of key value pair inside. A key is the name, a value is the value of that name. Yes? Okay. In Java, it's a little bit different. In Java, if you want to make an object, you first have to make a template of that object. Okay? A template, think of it as like a mold. You want to make, I don't know, toys. So instead of carving every toy, instead you make a mold and you fill it with some sort of a gooey stuff. You put it you know, into some heater and you come out and you get all these toys that look the same. You guys get what I'm saying? It's the template. It's the thing that you then fill with, um, what do you fill it with? 
plastic. Plastic, let's say. And then when it dries, it takes that shape. So you have your template and you have your actual toys. Yes? Okay, so think of it as this way. That template is your class. The class is the template. The objects that you get out of using that class are the actual instances. They're the actual toys. They're the actual things that you will then use. Got it? So you have classes, which are your templates, that are used to then make actual instances, actual objects. Somehow get it? Okay. So now, let's do this. I mentioned that, as you can see, example 6 is a class. Right? So I, that means here, let's get rid of this stuff, let's get rid of this function. That means here I can make an object using this class. I can do new, example 6, methods. That's how I make an object. Now, it makes sense that when I make a new object, I put it into a variable to use later. Remember in JavaScript we would do this. Right? This would make the object, and the object would go into this variable. Yes? Okay, so let me just do this then. Let a equals that. Can I do that? No, not let. Why can't I use... Okay, right, I can't just use let. Why? Because that is JavaScript, yes. Yes. Remind me. We have to say the type. Right? Okay. Now let's see if you can guess. What is the type of A? You're right. It's, it's an object, but what kind of an object? What kind of a class? It's that. Yeah, it's that. A is a type of that thing. The very thing that I just created a new instance of. Somehow get it? So, no, okay. Alright, so look. We are using the class that I've created up there, the class, to make a new object. Right? Okay? That object is one of these things. I know what to do. Watch. Let me make a whole other class. New, let me just make a regular file. Let's call it person.class. Oh, sorry, .java. Okay. Now I'm going to do public class person. Good. I made the class. I need something to run this. Public static static void main, which takes an array of strings. Okay. Now in here, let me create a new person. Hang on one second. Question. When I make a new person, well, one second. When I make a new person and I store it in A, what kind of thing is A? Person. Exactly. That's why, to the left of it, does that make sense? Okay, go. Who had the question? Someone said I have a question. Go. Uh, can we change the name of arts? Yeah, that's just a variable. You can call it. And why do we give it an array of strings? Good question. Uh, so when you remember how you run your program, you first do Java C to compile it. Yeah. Then you do Java and the name of the class, right? Yes. Well, it turns out you can do Java, name of the class, and then more things. Like you can do Java, name of the class, and foo, bar, zoo. Okay. Foo, bar, and zoo will come in as arguments in that array. Okay. You mean like you can call different parts of the main function? Not different parts. You can pass the main different arguments can we, from command line. Can we not give anything here? Like just delete the string array? Um, you can't because then that breaks the signature for main. Uh, and we'll talk about how you can have the same name but different, it's called method overloading. You can have the same function, but it will be different depending on arguments. Okay? Go. 
What about constructors? We'll get there. What, later. It's like a We'll get there. Okay, so so just based on this, is this clear? So I used person to make a new object. Fine? Okay, now let's talk about the person object. If we create, just imagine thinking of a person. What do, what's some information that we might want to store about a person? Okay, so we want to store maybe their name. So name. What's wrong with what I did? Exactly. So we know that name is a string. What's some other information? Age. Age. Int. Yeah, okay. Give me one more. Very nice. Okay, so we have these things. That means here, for when we create A, we can say A.name is going to be, say, Joe. A dot age is, let's say, can I do this? No. Why? Because exactly. So what's something I can put in? Five. Five. Okay, so Joe is five years old. Fine. Uh, A dot height. <laughs> Whatever. They're really tall. <laughs> All right, so let's do one. One if good, reasonable. <laughs> Yeah, this is weird. Hang on, let's do... <laughs> okay, good. This is more of a... Alright, good. Now, so question. Wait, 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 wait. Settle down, settle down. How do I print the name of this person that I just made? Uh, a.name. System out, print ln, a.name. But not in the object. Voila. Is that much clear? Yes. I yes? Okay. So in a, it turns out, so these things that are now cr created when I create a person, name, age, and height, they're referred to as uh, members. Can you remember that? Members. So you have an object which has these attributes, and the in Java we call these attributes members. Remember that. The reason why I care you guys remember this is because later when you move on to object or oriented programming or whatever, and the professor just goes, yeah, so you go and you modify the member and you, you don't go, eh? You know what a member is, right? It's one of these attributes. Fine? Okay. So in this case, we're setting members, the name member to Joe, the age member to 24, and the height member to 1.5. So far, so good. Okay. It turns out just like we can have... Uh, members, we can also have methods. What's a method? Function. Good. So we can do public. What f does my function return? Make something up. String. Uh, I don't know. Foo, which takes no arguments, for example, and just returns hi. <coughs> okay. So now I can now, when I've created my object, I can do a.foo, and that will return what? Hi. Good. So if I print B, I will print hi. Anything confusing about what I've done up until this point? This is, the person is a template, right? I use the person template to make a person instance, an actual object. Yes? That object has attached to it name, age, height, and foo. It does not have main attached to it. Main is attached to the actual class. Yes? Why do we write the string with an uppercase Because it's an object. Objects are specified using upper. Just like person, I named it capital P. Objects are typically uppercase. So we don't have lowercase strings? No. Uppercase. Uh, because it's an object. And the, the convention is that classes, which then construct objects, of course, are begin with uppercase. Okay? Okay. So that means that I can... Uh, so if I had here public static um, int zoo... Hang on. Which, oh, it has to return a 1. From here, can I do this? A dot zoo. 
What's it saying? It seems like I can, but I shouldn't. It's kind of weird. Instead, I do. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me explain. Let me explain. Watch. Any function that is static or any value, you can have members as well, that is static belongs to the class. Anything that is not static belongs to the instance. Question. How many class how many person classes do I have? One. How many instances of a person can I have? As many as I want, right? Watch. I can make as many people as I want. There. I just made three people. Right? So I can make as many instances as I want, but I can only have one actual template. Yes? Okay. So now follow me here. A static value or a function belongs to the class. That means there is only one of those things. However, when I create objects, non-static functions and members are created for every one of those things. You guys following me? Mm -hmm. oh, no? Okay. Okay, you have your template, which says a person should have a name. A person should have whatever, right? If it has a static function on it, there is only one of those functions, and you can call it from anywhere. When you don't have a static function, when it's a regular function, every time you make one of those things, an actual instance of the mold, you end up with its own private function. This will make more sense to you once you understand what this is. So just give me like five more minutes and it will make sense to you. Okay, just five minutes. Okay. So now watch. Suppose I want to be more specific. I don't want name. I want first name and I want last name separately. Now I want a function that I can call that will return to me the full name. What's the syntax I can use? Public string. Void? It, I want it to return the full name. String, get full name, something like that. And I want it to return this.first name plus empty text plus this.last name. What is this? The object that the object is running it. Exactly. Uh -huh. So look, you used the person class to make an instance of an object. Inside of that object, if you do this, it means this. Yeah? Okay, so that means we make a new person that has in it first name, last name, age, height, and this function. This refers to the instance, that one person. So this will refer to the first name of that per of whatever instance I have. Last name will refer to that name. Okay, look. Let me, take, let me make two people. A dot first name is Joe. Joe. Ah. Okay. A dot last name is whatever. I don't care. B B B. I should. Oh, I know Joe Jackson. <laughs> All right, good. Then D has a D dot first name of. And D dot last name has a name of, no, really, Jackson, Jackson? Fine, whatever. Okay, that's the dad, that's the son, whatever, fine. Okay. Hang on. Okay, so now, look, if I do A dot get full name, I can then do B dot get full name. Oh, sorry, D. Good. Okay, when I call this, it's going to go into A, which is specifically this instance. 
When I, do, inside of this, do that, this dot first name, I'm referring to that. This dot last name, I'm referring to that. Joe, raise your hands if you don't get this, because I'm not doing a good job explaining it. Okay, one person. Really? Two people? Oh, now you, okay, good. All right, how do I explain this? Okay, I know. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, look. I want to make people. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I want to make people. I make one person, I make another person. This has a first name, F name of Joe, and an L name of Jackson. You guys can see, right? Okay, this other person has an F name of Michael, and an L name. Yeah, I should have done George, whatever. Okay, is this clear? Now, I go to this one and I say, hey, what's your full name? It says my full name, my full name is my first name with my last name, right? My full name and my last name. Yes? Okay, my in Java is this. My first name plus my last name is my full name. So this refers to yourself, me. Did that make sense? Yes? Really? All right, good. Okay, so one more time. What I've done here is I've made two people. One that I put into A and one that I've put into B. I've made A have the first name of Joe, last name of Jackson. I've made B have first name of Michael, last name of Jackson. If I do dot get full name, the implementation is my L name plus text plus my last name. Agreed? So now just replace in your head my with this. Ah, that you can. Uh, in JavaScript, if you do this, you get, unless you pass the second argument, you get the global context. Unless you use use strict, use strict in which case you get undefined. So no, it's not the same. But sort of. Okay, this is used in JavaScript, so you're right, but. Don't worry about it. Let's, let's get back to this. So within an object, within an object, you have functions. If you say this, you're referring to that function, to that object. You're referring to yourself. This is me. Gosh, Hati. But I want you, yeah, but I want you to use this anyway. Always just use this, because this is just very clear. It's, it's better syntax. This you're saying specifically, my first name? It's just, it's very, see not that. Always use this, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so if you want to do it without an object, you can make a static function like this, look. Public, static, string, get full name. Oh, hang on, let me, let me full name one, whatever, there. And have that return high for now. I can now do person dot, person dot get full name one. The problem is in here, this. What is this? There is no this, because you don't have a person yet. Wait, aren't class terzelu? Like you, you don't even write it? No. In Java, all the code you write has to be inside of a class. It, it's a rule, and the name of the file has to be the name of the class. Jokes? Voda? No. See, class starts here and ends way the heck down there. Huh? Children. So each, uh, no, 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 no. I promise you, no. 
it's, it's always, this is the end of the class and everything we wrote is up here. It's between this and the end. Whole skip does. Yes? I don't get the template for Okay, no problem. Okay. So remember, our class is our template. Okay, I want a class of a person. What does that mean? It means I want a template, something that describes what a person is going to be. Okay, I know that a person is going to have a head and a body. I know that a person is going to have a first name, a last name, an age, etc. Right? So here I specify what a person is going to be. With me? Yes? Kind of. Here you describe what a person is. What is a person? It's an object that's going to have a name, a last name, whatever. So you specify the information it's going to have. Yes? Okay. Then using this, I make an actual person. Ah! This is an actual person. They breathe, they live, yay. They have an actual name. Joe. This says they're going to have a name. This says their name is Joe. Jagish? Then I go and get another person. With me? Okay, that to make a new person is this right here. With me? Person is the template. When I make new person, it's the and it returns a new person. This? Okay, going back to the very beginning. How do you run your Java program? No, how do you run it in command line? And you get that as an argument. Name of the class. Now what? What do you run in that class? Huh? You have to agree on a function that you will call when I tell you this class. The function we agree on is name. Yeah? That's it. Okay. Other questions? Yes? Would you explain me about, for example, the difference between this topic and many Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So now look, I've made two people, right? And this one has a first name. First name. And they have Vahagen. Okay? If I talk to this one, if this one has a function, this function can do this and refer to itself. If this had a function, this could do this and refer to itself. You with me? If you have a person, you know that you have, you can refer to yourself. Yes? A class is not an instance. It doesn't have self. It's a template. So there is no it. Okay, I can make as many people as I want. And for each person, if I go get full name and it does this, that first name, it will refer to its own first name, right? So that means that context, that understanding that this is one person, this is separate every time. In a static, there's only one. So there is no this. Which this? Just for my own understanding, raise your hands if you understood the difference between static and non-static. Understood. Oh, fine. For now, let's agree on this. Okay, even if you don't understand, just agree on this. A static function belongs to the class. So if you want to call it, you do class name dot whatever. If you don't do static, it belongs to the actual instance. So only after you do new whatever and you make an object, then you can do dot whatever. If you just know that much, I'll be happy. Do you know that much? 
Yeah. No? <laughs> Raise your hands if you understand what a class is. I understand. Really? Like more than half of you don't know what a class is? Okay, put your hands down. Look, a class is a template. Pay attention. A class is a template. It describes what an object will be. It says this object will have a name. It will have an age. It will have a phone number. When you do new class, you make an actual instance of that. So this describes what a person is. When you do new, you make a person. So you can use this to make a person, make another person, make another person. So it's the DNA. It's the DNA, it's the template, it's the description. It's the DNA, sure, yeah, fine. Raise your hands if you know what a class is. If you don't know what a class is. Good, all right, most of you now know what a class is, thank you. You, you, so you were either not paying attention or, okay, fine. Okay, good. So we know what a class is. A class, when you describe it, you say what it's going to have. It's going to have a first name. It's going to have a phone number. So when you make an instance, it has those things. It has a name. It has a phone number. It has whatever. Fine. This part we get. Second part. A class can have functions which when you make instances can refer to this this being itself yes it's the me it's the itself so when you make a new object it does this it refers to itself so if you have if you make a new person and they do this dot first name they're saying my first name got it a few people looked down when i said got it why if you ask me what my name is, I'm going to say my name is Ruben, right? My name is Ruben. Your name is something else. Every instance has a notion of me. Yes? Me is this. That's it. Howard, good, fine. As we build out these classes, so imagine you're trying to build a, I don't know, a big app, you're trying to build Facebook, something you know. What are some of the objects that Facebook might have? A picture is a value, it's a URL. What's another, what's an object? A birthday is an attribute that has a value, which is just the date. A person. We have a person. Good. What kind of members can a person have? First name, age, email, whatever. Uh, uh, profile picture, right? Okay, good. What else exists on Facebook? Groups. A group is an object. Good. Is there a relationship between groups and people? Yes. What is that relationship? Huh? Yeah, are you a member of the group? Good. Let's model that. Let's model that. So let's create a new class, a new class called, uh, let's call it Facebook member. Member? Facebook user. Dot, dot Java. Okay. What's the name of this class? Facebook user. What are some members that a Facebook user might have? Okay, so just talk. Just talk. Name. User. What? Uh, so string, password, uh, string user ID maybe, string email. Uh, sure, let's keep it a string. Uh, give me one more. 
But why is it not? Why is it not? Okay, fine, fine. All right, all right, all right. Hang on. Okay, so now let's make another class. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, good? Happy? Okay, so now let's make a Facebook group. I don't know, dude. I just made stuff up. Don't, don't okay, so Facebook group dot Java. What's the name of this class? Hang on, hang on. So, what's some information that a Facebook group might have? Huh? String name. It might have a. The group might have a name, right? Good. What else? Users. users. That's interesting. Exactly. So what we might want to do is Facebook user. It's an array, right? So we need members, right? Okay. What's something else? Closed or open. Yeah. Good. So um, how many are there? Just closed or open? Okay, so we can do boolean, right? Uh, false. False if not. Okay, by the way, you notice that comments in Java are the same as in JavaScript? Another similarity. Okay, good. So now let's actually try to use this. So now let's, uh, how do I actually run a program? Okay, so now let me make a new instance of Facebook group. So, Facebook group, group, new Facebook group. Okay, good. So, now I want to make a bunch of users. How do I make users? Can we use the class in this class? Or the other? Uh, so yes, but only because we'll talk about we'll talk about packaging and how you can use what and how you bring in other things a little bit later. But for now, just assume because they're right next to each other. Yes, you can. They're in the same directory, so you can go. With what? Oh. Yeah, with a for loop, sure. Okay, so instead of making a user one at a time, let's make a for loop. So let's create, a, let's have group dot members. Let's make a new, new Facebook user array of, I don't know, 50. Okay, what did I do here? Exactly. Okay, so let's fill into that array how many members? Do you want to do all 50 or do you want to do 20? Up to you. Tell me how many users you want in this group. Huh? 10. Good, okay, fine. Okay, for int i 0, i is less than, you said, what, 15? Fine, 10. I plus plus. Okay. What have I done? I made 10 users. Now I need to actually add this. Ah, ah, hang on. There. I need to I need to do group dot mem dot members I is user. You with me? Mm -hmm. So by the time we get here. We have a group that has 50 potential places for people, 50 spaces, if you will. But I fill 10 of them with these users. Now, question Do my users have names? No. Yes. No. So they have names, but they're empty. What is the value of all of their names right now? No. No. Empty in Java, remember, is no. Okay, so why don't I, instead of doing that, give them names? So let's have my user.name be 
I don't know, Joe concatenated with I. So I get Joe 0, Joe 1, Joe 2, Joe 3, Joe 4, whatever. Group of Joe's. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's a group of Joe's, yeah. Ooh, let's have that be the, be the name. Group.name is a, oh, sorry. A bunch of Joe. <laughs> Two notes. Do I want my group to be open or closed? Closed. Only for Joe's. Only for Joe's. I love that. Only for Joe's. Interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Only for Joe's. How can we make sure that only Joe's are entered into this list? So let's make a fun let's make the let's make a function. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Void add Joe, which takes a Facebook user. Okay, and then in here we are going to say User. Okay. And then in here we need some sort of an if condition. Ah. User dot name dot uh, ends with, hang on, is there a begins with? Start. Nice, starts with, ha ha ha. Starts with Joe. So if it starts with, what is the return type for starts with? It's a boolean. What does an if statement take? A boolean. And if it's true, it does not, if no, 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 right? Good. So if this is true, now we have to add user to members. Mm, members. Right? Okay. So why don't we add it to the first index that is empty in my list? So I can do for int i is 0, i is less than members.length, i++, plus plus. if members i is no. Let's put it there. Members i is user. You with me? No. Okay. No problem. I'm with you, brother. What does this part do? What is members? Why is it null? Initially, when I first make this list, uh, where is it here? It makes 50 slots, but they're empty, right? There are no users yet. So that means I have 50 nulls in there, 50 empty spaces. Yes? Okay, then what I do is I loop over and I make a user, I set their name, and then I call group.addJoe user. We first check to see that user that I'm adding, does it start with Joe? Yes or no? If yes, if the text for name begins with Joe, then we go in here. And what does this do? Huh? Say, say again? Okay, what, does, what is this? It's the group. It's referring to itself, right? So it's saying my members, my members dot length, let me iterate over all of them and find the first slot that's empty. And let me add that user to that slot. <coughs> but question, the first time this gets called by a user, how many places will that user get added? Let's look. I is zero. Is the first member within the list empty the very first time I call it? Yes. yes? So yes, so I put it in there. Loop again. Is the second location, index one, empty? So I put it in there. Loop again. And I keep doing this, so what happens? I add the same user 50 times. Instead, what I want to do is go until I find the slot, put it in, and stop. 
How can I end this function? Voila. Return means stop. Do something. Got it? Do you see how this is useful now? This refers to itself. It's referring to its own members. <coughs> Why do you need to know your own members? Because we can have lots of groups, and every group has to know about its own members. Yes? Lots of blank faces. Holy crap, this is way harder than last class. FB user is not an array. Members is an array. FB user is an object. It's an instance of a user. Got it? I create the group. I set the name of that group. I set that group to closed. I say that the members should be 50. It can have 50 members. And then I loop over 10, making a user whose name is Joe concatenated with some index. And then I call this function to add that user to its members. Go. Voter. Voter. This is, this is saying this is a member which has, which is of type an array of users. Here I allocate memory, actual instance for that list. Got it? So now members has a list of, ten, of 50 places where you can add people. Then I loop 10 times adding FB user. So out of the 50, how many users will I have? 10. Good. I create a user. I give it a name. I then call add user, which goes here. That's it. I first check to see, is the name beginning with Joe? If it is, if it's true, I go in here and I loop over my members. I find the first member index that is empty. Now is empty. If it's empty, I assign that user to that index and I finish. Yes, that's where the that, that's it. That's the guy. And now the question is how it's getting worse. Okay, so a simple question is for now. Assume that if it's in the same directory, it will it know it can find it. They can find each other. It's, notice they're right next to each other. This and this. Is there where like to include? The yes, yes. You can put in different directory. You import, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Go. Do we need to compile two class two? No. So once you compile one, it it tends to uh, compile all of its dependencies. So it happens automatically. Go. Uh, uh, name members and those are public by default, right? No, they're something else. I'll talk about private, public. No, they're they're they're, they're it's like package protected. It's it's something else. Huh? Yes, there's a default. I'll talk about what public is and private, all that later. Don't spell sick. What if they're private? What if the attribute by default? What is it? What is the type? Or what is the? Um, it's it's called pri it's called protected package protected. So there are four of them: public, pu public, private, protected, package protected. Okay. Uh, forget what I was just talking about with him. That's just between us. Uh, just about this code. Just what you're seeing. Are there questions? <laughs> ha, check. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in JavaScript, remember JavaScript functions were values, right? And so if you could create a variable and you put the value, it depends on where you assign that variable. Order matters. In here, notice we don't do that. Nowhere do we set a, in a function to a variable. 
Because in Java, functions are not values. Therefore, no, order does not actually matter. Yeah. So you can have a function, then a function here, and this can call this. No problem. Go. Can you please explain your last four? Last four. Uh, this stuff here? Sure. This is clear. OK. This, so if FB user is a template. When you do new, you make an actual instance of the template. So a template describes what a user is. Yeah, it's okay. So new user, new Facebook user makes an actual instance of a user, right? We make an instance and we put it into a variable. Question for you: What what is the type of data that's inside of user? Exactly. Right? Hence, you specify the type. Okay. You then specify the name of that thing you made. In this case, we're just setting everything to Joe because. We're just making up a random name. Joe 1, Joe 2, well, Joe 0, Joe 1, Joe 2. Huh? Yes. Yes? Okay. So what are, the, what are the names of the people I will make if I run this? No? What's the first value of I? So what do I get? The last one. Joe 9. Very good. So I make these Joes, the 10 Joes, and for every Joe, I call this add user with that Joe. Right, so add user, add Joe is that function right there. Oh, really? Oh my god. Okay, that, look, add Joe belongs to this group, and that's that. And what argument does it take? User, good. So this goes there. The whole world just opened up for you, didn't it? Go. Like user F, user e, uh, user. What type of user we say that it's for the user? Yes. Uh, can we write for the group uh, type of the user? You can you can make a different class that's specifically for fa for group users, but you can't. If you wrote group here, this would be an error because you're making a user and you're trying to put it into a variable that's expecting a group. Our new user will have the same uh, type of the group user, uh, for the group. Yeah. Sure. Look, you're, you're saying, can I just put group here? No. It inheritance it has, it has a constant. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Um, guys, it's really important that you get this because after this, we're going to go way deeper. So if you did not get this, please come to office hours. You have to understand this because next class, we're going to dig into inheritance and packages and all these fancy things that probably make no sense to you right now, but are really cool. And they're things you have to know for the next semester. Otherwise, you're going to hang yourselves. <laughs> so come to class. And if, you're miss if you don't understand what I did here, come to office hours. What time is it? Huh? Can't stop. Awesome, okay.